this is Thomas Lindbergh from At The Gates. We're here in Dublin uh, to play a show at the Academy. Uh, well, <clears throat> now in the beginning of 2015, we have a lot of shows lined up. Um, this, we're taking this uh, this album to most of our fans worldwide. Actually, uh, in a week, we are going, we're going to be in Tokyo and Beijing, for example. Um, there's a lot of shows booked, but uh, not so many long tours. More weekend shows and uh, stuff like that. We're going to America as well in March and April. Uh, we already did a European tour in December. So we, 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 we're touring a lot more than we usually do uh, on this new album because we, we, we want to. We feel that we are proving the relevance of the band, so to say, with, with this album. And uh, so far, the reaction has been good. So we, we're going to continue until until people <laughs> don't come to the shows anymore. <laughs> Sixth Sense picking up the record as one of the best metal albums uh, or hard rock albums this year is fantastic. I, I, I think in general the reception, especially in the US, has been very overwhelming for us. You know, we hit the billboard charts and the alternative billboard charts and everything. So uh, we were not ready for that. We, we recorded the album just to, you know, for ourselves as we always do, but uh, we're very happy and of course the record label is very happy because of this, you know. It's, uh, everything is like a bonus for us coming now uh, with, with this kind of rewarding statements from well-known musicians and well-known, uh, you know, journalists and stuff like this. So, yeah, we are very happy, of course. I've seen you enter the charts in many countries, actually, it was not only in America. So, um, how does this feel? Because you must be really proud of the new album and um, which, when, which song actually is for you the most important? And the most, uh, where you have the most emotions about, maybe from from the from the album. Well, I mean, for us, for us, uh, hitting the charts uh, in, in in a lot of areas is, uh, as, as I said before, it's like a bonus. We didn't really think about it because, for if in our heads, we're we're an underground death metal band, and you know, underground death metal bands don't chart really. You know, we were number three in Sweden. That's pretty crazy. You know, um, <clears throat> we don't really have. What you would call hit songs that way, but I think the the strength of this record is like the diversity of emotions that it that it portrays. Because uh, this kind of music usually is just angry, you know, 24/7 angry, and we we, we want to portray a lot of more, you know, melancholy and desperation. Uh, even there's even some hope in, in some of the songs, you know, some some triumphant hope. Um, so I think the diversity is the strength of the record. Um, the songs that are most, you know, valuable for us are the ones that are kind of reaching out our sound a little bit. There's a few of those on the record, you know, of Heroes and Tombs, uh, Night Eternal, and uh, Water from Chaos, which are like breaking new ground for us. That, that's very important for us. But I mean, all the songs mean a lot to us because they're very. It's a very personal record that way. Yeah. And you've released a video for um, Heroes and Toms. So how, how important are music videos to you? And I mean, this is an animated video. Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, I would say music videos nowadays. <clears throat> and we were talking about YouTube before, and, and how that that's the, the main reason for doing it. I guess this is really no, there's no MTV in that sense anymore. So you have to. But people want to see something. You know, they want to have moving pictures, not just the music. So. I think with with our videos for this record so far, we we show some people that we really want to work with that are that have an artistic vision, not just do a, like it's not promo clips. It's it's actually something that accompanies and gets something more out of the, of the music and the lyrics. Uh, and that's uh, I think we've really succeeded with both videos in a way. And, and having an animated one was something that we wanted for a long time, you know. And uh, of course that's has mixed reactions from people you know, some but I think our, our, our fans are really open-minded very broad in, in their, in their uh, musical taste and they understand that there's another vision of just you know five guys headbanging in the room there's something more behind the lyrics so you need to portray that in the music video I'm very happy with both of them uh, the first video is from for death and the labyrinth which is also very artistic so uh, what what is, do you have already something in mind for your next one uh, well, yeah, there's, there's been talk. Uh, we, we're trying to organize, you know, uh, kind of have this discussion of which song is going to be, uh, because as, as I said, there's a lot, lot of diversity on the record. 
we we, uh, we want to have one that is more full on, but uh, we also want to have one that is even more artistic and weird. So maybe we'll do two more. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You know, it, it's of course a budget thing, but if we can have the chance to work with people that we really, you know, uh, look up to as our, as uh, artists, we we want to be nowhere at the cost. There's a lot of legends um, in, in hard rock music in, in, in general, and it's very, uh, how can you say it, it's, it's hard to find a uh, perfect one for our sound, I guess. <clears throat> it would be very cool to have, uh, you know, maybe Cliff Burton to play some solo bass on a record, because that's one of my childhood idols in a way. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some of my heroes that are dead are not really, they wouldn't really understand our music, like Phil Lynott, he would never understand what we were doing. You probably hear some, you know, some of the Lissy harmonies that we stole, but we have, they have mutated far beyond what he could probably, you know, imagine, I guess. But uh, there, there's a lot of talented people that are still alive, that we, <laughs> that we, that we have worked with and that we continue working with, so. I think the music scene today is more thriving than, than, than ever, the, because it's wider and this, as I said, the, the fan base is more understanding now than ever been before. You know, um, you can be artistic and can try different perspectives and not be shut down. You know, we are we are a very you know super democrat democracy this band. So everybody decides, and um, if there's a certain song that one member doesn't want to play, it doesn't get played. You know, everybody wants everybody needs to agree on everything. It takes a lot of time and effort, but it also helps with the, with the attitude in the band because everybody knows that they're not going to be disappointed. Everybody knows that they're going to be happy with the result because uh, everybody has to have a veto for everything, mm -hmm. really. Uh, but for this, it was more like there's no songs on the new record that we didn't want to play. It's more like what goes in the set list first, the personal favorites, whatever. But we're gonna, probably going to play this set list for, for, for a bit and then, you know, change some of the new songs into other new songs. Uh, there's a certain limit of old songs that we, we probably have to play, you know, the, all the old stuff. And the old songs are probably, because those are, you know, more set in stone, which ones we have to play, I guess, you know. And uh, do you also listen to feedback from fans? When they say, okay, why did you play this and this song? Could you not play this and this song? Would you change the set list? If uh, to a certain degree, we listen to it, of course. And sometimes we ask, of course, as, as well on, on our Facebook, whatever, you know, for, for fan favorites and stuff. But there's also, <clears throat> we know what, what works in the live situation a lot. And I mean, of course, some of the old songs are very abstract and very progressive. And in the live setting, you know, sometimes, that's just like people go out and smoke on those songs, you know, <laughs> because it's like too weird. And uh, yeah, it has to fit in. It has to be a set that you know has, has a good flow. Uh, what I'm most intrigued with and happy with is like how the new songs actually m melded right into the format. They actually fit very well with, with the old, next to the old songs, and that's something that I'm very happy with. So, what can the Irish fans expect tonight? Well, um, the ones maybe uh, the ones that are here, and uh, what will the others who do, do, don't come to the show well, will yeah, miss? They're, they're <laughs> going to miss something, yeah. Because I think this is our 25th show on the on the new record, and we, we we're really starting to get a solid set now that we really feel 100% happy with, and uh, the flow of the set, the energy is there. We feel very secure and can relax, and can just give you know full contact with the audience. I think that's the, the most important thing with our sets and, and our shows are like the contact with the audience and how to, you know, with 600 people in a room, you have to kind of conduct the, the harmony, the emotions in the room. And that's pretty, that's pretty interesting how, to, how you can actually do that. And uh, we need their, their reaction and emotions to, to do what we do. So it's, it's that, that mix it almost comes in, uh, into one being, you know, that's, that's what the fans will, <laughs> will see tonight. What's your favorite thing to see in the audience while you're on stage? Um, I would say passion, you know, passion. That, that's something 
it doesn't have to be, you know, violent or angry or anything. It could be smiles, you know, you know, with you know, with joy, you know, also. It just, you know, when you see when people are into it with the heart, when, when there's a passion into it. Okay, and uh, at the end of the interview, um, do you have a message for your Irish fans? Well, uh, for the Irish fans, we are very happy to finally be here. Uh, this is our first ever Irish show, and it took you know a lot of years, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but it, it won't be that long until the next one, I promise that. And next time, hopefully, we can do more shows around the, your country. You know, not, not just Dublin. You know, yeah. hopefully. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Thank you.